people in the, in the churches of men. You know why? Because the members of the church of Christ obeyed the gospel and then left their first love, cast off their faith. I think Michael was telling me the other day about a man he met and said, yeah, his wife used to be in the church of Christ. Now she's, now she's uh, in the Baptist church. Well, she doesn't repent. She's going to be lost. She's going to be lost. And there's a lot of our brethren there saying, well, you know what? I, I think I'm just going to, I'm going to be all right. I'll just go over here and pal around with the denominations. I'll pretend like I'm with them. Oh, no, you're not. You're frustrating the grace of God by not being a faithful member of the church. Listen, in Hebrews 10, verse 28, it says, He that despised Moses' law died without mercy under two or three witnesses. Of how much sore punishment, suppose ye that he shall be thought worthy who hath trodden underfoot the Son of God and hath counted the blood of the covenant wherewith he was sanctified an unholy thing and hath done despite unto the Spirit of grace. There's that word frustrate. He that frustrated said it not the law of Moses died without mercy unto the witnesses. How much sort of a punishment for someone who has trodden the foot of the blood of Christ. You need to take it seriously, brethren. If you're a member of the church of Christ, you don't be playing. We're not playing church. You're either going to be faithful or you're going to be unfaithful. Are you going to church only to find a club? Are you tired of looking for the Bible but only getting babble? Are you tired of this commercial? So am I. Well, these commercials may be old and boring, but the gospel we preach never is. Come study the Bible with the Church of Christ. We're meeting at 250 the Boulevard. Our new times are Sundays at 9 a.m. for Bible study and 10 a.m. for worship, and then Thursday nights at 7 p.m. Come visit with us. We hope to see you there. Don't flex your muscles. Flex your mind. Watch a word from the Lord. Thursday nights at 9. I did it for science. What power? What power? After losing the debate to the KKK, Michael went to school. Just being a preacher in general is not a job for sissies. Uh, you have to have thick skin. You have to be ready to be uh, scrutinized on all points. Uh, you know, that's, that's one of the things that I believe that they were really trying to help us with, you know, in the school that I was attending, was that some of the instructors, they would, you know, they would kind of pick out some guys and they would just be really hard on them for a certain amount of time. Visit the Martinsville Church of Christ. Services 11 a.m. on Sunday, 7 p.m. on Wednesday. Watch them on TV Wednesday night at 9 p.m. on Comcast Channel 18 and Sunday night on WGSR at 9 p.m. All right, everyone, welcome to a word from the Lord. Uh, glad to be with you tonight, and uh, we are uh, glad you are, are, are tuning in. Uh, watching, uh, you've been watching uh, uh, one of our tent meeting uh, videos that uh, Mark had, had played, so we want you to uh, know that uh, any of our DVDs or anything that we're doing is, is free of charge, and here's how you can reach us. Here's my contact information, to the Boulevard. It's where we meet. You can reach me at 276-340-2653, a word from the Lord at gmail.com. I think Richard's finna move me over a little bit. There you go. Better. A little bit better, yeah. All right. Now I'm, I'm cutting me cutting me off on the shoulder over here, but that's fine. I can I can just fade on out. <clears throat> uh, a word from the Lord at gmail.com is where you can is how you can reach me and if you'd like a copy of the uh, any DVDs or any of the lessons that we do or tent meetings or what have you, we'd be glad to uh, 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 bring you those and, and uh, uh, give you the, get those out to you as, uh, as quickly as possible. And uh, we want to remind you that you're welcome to come in and worship with us. Worship with us uh, Sundays at 9 a.m. Uh, uh, it's when we assemble for Bible study. Worship at 10 a.m. Thursday nights uh, at 7 p.m. Uh, Richard, you might have to, I don't know what, what it is there. We've got a, I'm, I'm walking into a wall there. Uh, maybe something on your, I don't think it's the camera. Uh, but uh, it's on, on my left side over here. Um, but anyway, uh, Thursday night's Bible study, Brother Michael Robertson will be coming down and, and uh, uh, going through some of the, uh, the Beatitudes, Matthew chapter 5, and um, we want you to come out and, and study that with us. Um, it's a very good study. We have a good time studying God's Word together, and of course you can watch our TV programs uh, 
on Sunday nights at 9 p.m., uh, Wednesday nights at 9 p.m. in Martinsville, Thursday nights at 8 p.m. and 9 p.m. and 10 p.m. Uh, if you're talking about uh, uh, WHIG TV out of Rocky Mount, uh, that's what we uh, I want to remind you what does the Bible say. Uh, brought to you uh, uh, from WHIG TV. Brother Johnny Robertson will be uh, uh, hosting that tonight at 10 p.m. So I want you to, when we get through this program, uh, log on to uh, WHIG TV and uh, uh, tune over there and, and watch uh, and watch that. We'd be glad to uh, answer any questions and, and uh, help you out in any way we can. So uh, if you're in the Martinsville area, of course, um, 823 Starling Avenue is where the Brethren meet, uh, 120 American Legion in Danville, where Mark and uh, is, is, is preaching there. And so I want you to go out and visit with those brethren uh, as well anytime you, you can. Tonight, I want you to talk, we want to talk about uh, a problem that I think most people have, have, have uh, talked about or heard in the news and usually we associate this with school, and that is bullying. And we want to talk about taking a stand against the bully. You know, bullying is, is a problem, like we said, it's in, it's in our schools. It's when someone is, is forcing their, their will upon another. Uh, actually uh, forcing them to do something that they don't want to do, um, maybe pressing them to uh, act or behave in such a way that's against their wishes or their will. And we, uh, you know, we talk about, we, we tout in our, in our society, you know, freedoms. We, we're the, the, the land of the free and the home of the brave. That's what America is. And so we should take our freedoms very seriously. But uh, sometimes there is a bully that comes on the scene, and the bully is one who, who tries to really take away that freedom, takes away the, the, uh, the individual's uh, freedoms or abuses that, that person's rights, takes away their rights. And so, we, you know, we don't like a bully. We don't really like a bully, someone that uh, comes in and forces their will on someone. And, you know, you know how a bully works. A bully, if you, uh, if you uh, uh, let a bully get away with it, he'll, just, he'll take more and more and more, usually... We, we think about the, the bully that takes the lunch money. You know, he, he beats up on the little guy and, and takes his lunch money and, and threatens him and, you know, bring, give him your lunch money or I'll do whatever. And, and so the, 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 the little person, the smaller person is intimidated. Maybe the, the, the weaker person or the, uh, the more uh, uh, mild or gentle person is intimidated by this aggressive bully. And uh, I think when you see things like that, you typically have a mindset or an attitude that says, you know what, I, I'm rooting for the little guy. I'm rooting for the underdog. I want, I want the bully to get defeated. <clears throat> I was watching a video just the other day on, on Facebook, and it was um, it, it's really kind of sad to watch, but it was actually the bully was the little guy. And he was picking on this great big kid. And uh, so, and so the, he was punching him. He hit him in the face a couple times, and I thought, you know, that's... That's so sad to see uh, uh, someone just being picked on, even though the, 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 the one, the victim, was, was a whole lot bigger. But finally, the victim just uh, had enough of it. He just grabbed that little guy and just, I mean, just slammed him to the ground. And I thought, you know what, I hate, I hate to see that, but I was glad to see the bully get a uh, you know, little piece of what he was dishing out. And so... It was almost like, you know, if you want to be the bully, the aggressor, then you should not, um, you should, you should not be surprised if someone retaliates. So we're talking about bullying tonight. Now I want to give you a, a biblical, let's talk, go to the Bible a bit, let's talk a little bit about the bully. Here's an example of bullying. I say in 1 Kings chapter 22, and we're going to put our, we'll put our Bible up here, in 1 Kings uh, chapter 22, we're going, to, we're going to meet uh, the kings of Israel and, uh, uh, and Jehoshaphat, the king of Judah. And in this particular uh, passage, we're going to find that the king of, Je of Israel, his name's Ahab, he asked uh, Jehoshaphat to come up and, and go to war with him against Syria. Now, Jehoshaphat is a pretty good king. He, he has his problems. He, has, he obviously runs with some, some bad people. Ahab is not. Uh, a, a good uh, uh, friend, and he's not a good ally, but he, nonetheless, he comes up and he says to, 
to Ahab, he says, you know, my people are like your people and, and my horses are like your horses and <clears throat> we'll go up and we'll fight in Ramoth Gilead and we'll, uh, you know, we'll be one. But Jehoshaphat says, inquire, I pray thee, at the word of the Lord today. And the king of, Ahab, and the king of Israel uh, gathered together the prophets together, about 400, and said, shall I go up to Ramoth Gilead and prevail? Now these... These 400 prophets, there's, you know, they're just uh, they're false prophets. Jehoshaphat sees through them. He knows that they're not telling him the truth. And he says, well, is there not a prophet of the Lord besides all these that we might inquire of him? All right, we hear what all these other uh, false prophets are saying, you know, the ones that are just going to tell you what you want to hear. But let's talk about a prophet from, from God. And so they call Micaiah. Ahab knows that Micaiah is someone that... Uh, that will definitely tell you what, what God says. And he says, well, there's Micaiah, the son of Imla, uh, whom may inquire the Lord. He says, but I hate him because he speaks nothing uh, good concerning me but evil. And Jehoshaphat let, says, let not the king say so. Uh, let, let's call him. And so they call Micaiah. Now, here's what I'm talking about the bully. When Micaiah is called, uh, all the false prophets have, have been giving uh, good news to Ahab and Jehoshaphat saying, yeah, you need to go up to war. God's going to deliver the Syrians into your hand. <clears throat> but listen to what, listen to what uh, is told him. Uh, the messenger that comes to get uh, 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 Micaiah says, uh, he says, behold now the words of the prophets, the words of the prophets declare good unto the king with one mouth. Let thy word, I pray thee, be like the word of one of them, and speak that which is good. Now, his definition of good is speak that which is pleasant to hear. That's not necessarily what's good. But notice what Micaiah says. Micaiah said, as the Lord liveth, as the Lord liveth, uh, I, I, I will speak, uh, what the Lord said to me, that's what I, that will I speak. And so he comes to the king and he says, you know, this is what's going to happen. Uh, he sarcastically says, you know, go up and fight. And Ahab knows that he's not really telling the truth. And so finally, Micaiah, and I'm paraphrasing all this. You can take your time to read 1 Kings 22. But finally, Micaiah gives him a message. He says, you know what? He said, uh, I saw the sheep, I saw Israel scattered as sheep without a shepherd. And he said, if you go up to Ramoth Gilead, you're going to, you're going to fall at Ramoth Gilead. Well, uh, Ahab didn't like that, obviously. But come on down. Now, here's, here's where we get to the, the, the bully part. That's what I'm saying. Uh, in verse 23, uh, Zedekiah. Now, Zedekiah is, is, is one of the, I guess, the head false prophets. But Micaiah says, uh, wherefore the Lord hath put a lying spirit in the mouth of all these prophets that have, uh, and, uh, and the Lord hath spoken uh, evil concerning thee. And then Zedekiah, but Zedekiah, the son of uh, Chenna, went near and smote Micaiah on the cheek and said, Which way went the spirit uh, of the Lord? Which way went the spirit of the Lord uh, from me to speak unto thee? And so he's, you know, really he's showing bully tactics here. You know, we're all saying something, one thing, and so I'm just going to hit you because I don't like what you're saying. You know, you're making me look bad. I'm going to be the bully here. Well, that's kind of a bully tactic, is it not? The bully uh, comes on the scene, and he, you know, he doesn't like maybe what someone else says, so the way he uh, deals with an opposing view or the way he deals with criticism is he uses force. He uses brute force. He'll, he'll hit you, and he'll smack you around, and... And he'll beat you up because that's how he's going to impose his will on you. Maybe he's going to intimidate you that way. So that's kind of what the bully does. Let, let me give you another example of a bully. And I think this may be even more like a bully or bully tactics. In 2 Kings chapter 18. So first we had Zedekiah, the false prophet. He smacks around Micaiah. And uh, that's one example of, of a false uh, prophet. But, or, or, excuse me, of a, of a bully. But in 2 Kings chapter 18 and verse 13, here's another example. Here's another example. Now in the 14th year of, the king, of king Hezekiah, did Sennacherib, king of Assyria, come up against the fenced uh, cities of Judah and, uh, and took them. And Hezekiah, look at verse 14, Hezekiah, the king of Judah, 
sent to the king of Assyria, to Lachish, saying, I, If I, I have offended, return from me that which thou... Uh, that, that, which, that which thou puttest on me will I bear. And the king of, of, of Syria appointed unto Hezekiah king of Judah 300 talents of silver and 30 talents of gold. All right, so he says, look, I, I've offended you. you know, let me just pay you off and, you know, you depart from me. I'll, just, I'll give you whatever you want. Just, you, you know, just leave. And so... Uh, the king uh, uh, Sennacherib says, "Well, here's what you, you pay some tribute to me. You pay, pay me pay me a little uh, money here. You know, basically taking your lunch money here, and I'll leave you." And so, uh, verse verse fifteen. And Hezekiah gave him all the silver that was found in the house of the Lord, and then the treasures of the king's house. And at that time, did Hezekiah cut off the gold from the doors of the temple of the Lord? And from the pillars which Hezekiah, king of Judah, had overlaid and gave it to the king of Assyria. All right, so here's the bully, king of uh, Sennacherib. He comes on, he says, you know what, I'm going I'm to besiege you. And Hezekiah gives in, he says, well, I'll pay you something, just you know, leave me alone. Well, you know what, you know what a bully does, don't you? You know, if, if a bully is not handled, he's going to come back. He's going to come back, and that's exactly... That's exactly what uh, King Sennacherib dub, uh, does. He comes back for more. Well, I got a little taste. You gave me a little something. You know, you gave me some gold and silver. I tell you what, you know, uh, I think maybe you can give me a little more. Maybe I can take a little bit more from you. So here he comes. Now, in verse 23, we're in Second Kings, chapter 18. Let's skip on down to verse uh, 23. Here we, here we have. Now, therefore, now he sends his... He sends his uh, uh, captain, Rabshaki, and he says, he's giving this message, he says, now therefore I pray thee, give pledges to my lord, the king of Assyria, and I will deliver these 2,000 horses, 2,000 horses, if they'll be able on thy part to set riders on them, all right? So, so now he's coming back, and he says, you know, you can't, you're not going to be able to lean on uh, uh uh, Egypt. Don't think about going down to Egypt and getting help. You can't do it. So he comes back. He comes back for some more. Now, friends and brethren, this is exactly what we're seeing, with, you know, this bully, bully mentality. They get someone, they, they take advantage of them, someone they perceive as weaker, and so then they say, you know what, I'm just going to dominate you. I'm going to force my will upon you. Now, the Bible says in Ecclesiastes 8, in verse 11, he says, because, uh, uh, Solomon says, because sentence against an evil work is not executed speedily, therefore the hearts of the sons of men is set in them, is fully set in them to do evil. Now this is a typical reaction. If, if a bully is not stopped, he'll take over. He'll just continue to enforce his will and get more and more aggressive, trying to get more and more power trying to get, uh, take advantage of more and more. And so what really has to happen is someone has to stand up and stop the bully. All right, so here's what we've seen. We've seen, we've seen this, bully, this bully mentality. We've seen uh, Zedekiah slap around Micaiah. Now we've seen King Sennacherib uh, come up to, against Judah and say, you know what, you pay me some tribute money now, uh, pay me some more. Well, when Hezekiah got a letter from Sennacherib, he didn't answer him. And, uh, and so Hezekiah, uh, Sennacherib basically says, well, I'm going to come and I'm going to destroy the city of Jerusalem. Well, God took care of Sennacherib. You can read about that in, in uh, 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 2 Kings 19, 18 and 19, when Sennacherib brought his army, an angel of the Lord came to destroy 185,000 uh, of his army, and the Bible says they all woke up dead. So uh, God took care of that bully. That's my point. But when you see someone that's trying to force their will on someone else, that's a bully mentality. Now, let me give you one more example of bully mentality. This has to do with preaching the gospel. Now, we're getting a little closer to our, the point of our lesson here. Friends, do you, do you really think that individuals would bully someone for preaching the gospel? You know, I believe some, oftentimes we, uh, we preach the gospel and we say, well, you know what, we live in a Christian society 
we would never, we would never see the day when uh, we couldn't preach the Bible. We couldn't read the Bible. We couldn't talk about the Bible. We couldn't be on TV and talk about the Bible. We couldn't preach what the Bible said. And that's the mentality we have. But notice this. In the very first century, shortly after the first gospel sermon was preached, there was already some bully mentality that was, that was being uh, exhibited when it came to preaching the gospel. Now let's look at Acts chapter 4. Acts chapter 4 and verse 15. Acts chapter 4, and uh, let's look at verse 15. They asked Peter and John, they asked them about how they healed this man that was lame. And they said, you know, we did it by the authority of Christ. Now, listen to what these, the religious leaders said. But when they had commanded them, that's the apostles, to go outside, to go outside out of the council, they conferred among themselves, saying, What shall we do to these men? For that indeed a notable miracle hath been done by them is manifest to all that dwell in Jerusalem, and uh, we cannot deny it. All right, so what are we going to do to them? What are we going to do to these men? But that it spread no further among the people, but they spread no further among people. Let us straightly threaten them that they speak henceforth to no man in this name. Now, you see what they're doing? If we're going to stop this so that it doesn't spread any further, we're going to threaten them. We're going to tell them that if they don't quit, you know, something bad's going to happen. You've got, you've got to stop this. You can't say what you're saying. You can't do what you're doing. We're giving you a threat. We're, we're, we're threatening you. All right? We're, we're threatening you. Now, listen. Listen to what the Bible says. In verse 18, they threatened them. And the Bible says, And they called them and commanded them not to speak at all, nor teach in the name of Jesus. Don't you do it anymore. Now, verse 21, So when they had, uh, when they had uh, together threatened them, they let them go, finding nothing how they might punish them. Now, I want you to notice these words. They said, we threatened them. We're going to threaten them uh, not to speak or to teach. Can you imagine someone ever saying, if you preach such and such, you're going to be punished. If you, if you speak such and such, you're going to be punished. And that's, exactly, and that's exactly what they did. Notice this in verse 21. They said uh, they threatened them because they didn't know how they could punish them. Now, if they knew how they could punish them, they would have stopped. They would have physically uh, punished them or hurt them to keep them from preaching what they were preaching. Now, do you think that's, that's bully tactics? Do you think that's... a uh, 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 that's, that's a bully tactic. Friends, I, I'm going to tell you that there is bullying going on. People are bullying the truth. Now, that's what we're looking at tonight. We're talking about bullying the truth. Stop the bully who's fighting the truth, who's picking on the truth. People are bullying the truth to try to get it from being told. You know, in, in uh, foreign countries, uh, there's a reason why political dissidents, pe uh, people who oppose their government, are usually kidnapped, taken away, and no one ever hears from them again. China, Cuba, places like this, where you, there's not a freedom of speech. If the government does not like what you say, they will seek you out and they will quiet your voice. They will stop you from speaking. They will not let your message out. That is exactly what was going on in the first century when it comes to the Bible, when it comes to the gospel. They said, we want to punish them. We, do you, you need to shut your mouth. Now, you might be saying, well, that will never happen today. I'm going to tell you, friends, you better be watching. You need, to, you need to open your eyes because there's a lot of bullying going on and the bullies are picking on the truth. 
Now let me give you another Bible example. Let's, let's go on. In Acts chapter 5 and verse 17. Now remember, this is just one chapter later. One chapter later. I'm going to put this up. I, my background is not cooperating here, and so we're getting kind of busy. I'm going to just go ahead and just put our text up here so we can read it. All right? So Acts 5 and verse 17. Then the high priest rose up, and all they which were with him, which is the sect of the Sadducees, were filled with, now watch it, were, were filled with indignation and laid hands on them and put them in a common prison. Now, what do you think, what do you think the mindset of these people are? We told them not to speak. But we are so angry at the message that we're going to put hands on them. Now they're in jail. Now they're in jail for preaching the gospel. They put them in the common prison. Now they're in jail. Now, I'm going to ask you, do you think this is going to happen today? Do you, do you think anybody would dare, would dare uh, uh, try to bully the truth to keep it from being spoken? Do you think that anyone would dare come up and say, you know what, I, I, just, don't, I just don't think that... Uh, that needs to be said. We're going to have to, we're going to have to threaten you not to, preach, not to preach it. We hate that message so much, we're going to try to stop you from preaching it. Now, I've heard, I've heard people say they've, they've said that to us. They've said that to us. Do everything they can to get us off the air. Now, why? Why would they say that? Why would they threaten that? Why would they bully us? Why would they bully the truth? Unless it was because, unless it was because something was being said that they didn't like and the only way they had to answer it was to physically shut the mouth of the messenger. Now, do you think that's going to happen? Do you, do you really think that's going to happen? Uh... In Acts 5 and verse 40, let's keep on down to Acts 5 and verse 40. Let's just see what it comes down to. Now, this is Gamaliel. Gamaliel is giving advice to people about how to deal with the apostles. He says, be careful what you do with them, because if they're from God, then you can't fight against it and so forth. And to them they agreed, and when they called the apostles and beaten them, You get that? And they beat them. They beat the apostles and commanded that they should not speak in the name of the, uh, that they should not speak in the name of Jesus and let them go. They beat them and then command them again, don't speak. Well, I say this is kind of like that old saying, you know, if you can't beat them, beat them. That's what they're doing. They don't like the message, so it, they will threaten. They will bring out the, the big guns. They will do whatever it takes. They'll drag them to court in order to get them to hush. Now, friends, I want you to know that this bully tactic has always been used ever since God's message has been, been proclaimed. The, bull, the bully method has been used. Every, every time God has a message for, for, for people and they don't like the message, they usually wind up killing the messenger, threatening the messenger, beating the messenger, and ultimately killing the messenger. Now, if you don't think, if you don't think that bullying, that bullying is happening in our society, I just want you to consider this. I want you to consider this. This is an example of bullying. This is, this is an example of how bullying to keep something quiet really works. The first article I'm going to show you here is an article <clears throat> about, um, 
let's see here. It's an article from West Hollywood. It says, West Hollywood, that's, that, that we ho is West Hollywood, West Hollywood Bar, to deny entry to lawmakers who back anti-gay legislation. Now, now, I want you to see the bully tactics come into play here. There's a bar in West uh, Hollywood. It's called the Abbey Food and Bar. And it is a, it's, it's a um, homosexual, popular gay bar. And this is what the article says. You might not can read this, but it says, Southern California legislators, lawmakers, Southern California lawmakers who support legislation to discriminate against gays and lesbians now have one less hot spot to visit in West Hollywood. Well, I would say big deal. You know, I'm, who would want to visit anyway? David Cooley, the founder of the Abbey Food and Bar, located at whatever the address was there, has announced a popular gay bar will add any legislator in any state who votes, quote, for bills to allow for discrimination against LGBT people to a deny entry list. He said he would take their picture, put it on the wall, to show that they are denied entry. In other words, he's going to deny service to these people. He would deny service to these people because of what they said or did are laws that they signed or promoted, all right? He denying it. You know what? That's his right. If he doesn't want to serve these people, that's fine. But I want you to notice why he's doing it. Because they don't agree with what he believes, therefore he says, I'm going to deny entry to them. Okay? Now, let's, uh, let's look on the other side of the coin here. Now, if you've been keeping up with the news, friends, you'll, you'll know something about this, and if not, you need to quit watching Oprah and The View and Dr. Phil and Dr. Oz, whatever, and pay attention to the news, actual news. But in Arizona, there was a Senate bill, Senate Bill uh, 1060, 1062, Senate Bill 1062, that basically was a freedom of religion legislation. They were just modifying a law that had already been on the books for 15 years, and basically it was a, legisl uh, uh, a piece of legislation, a bill, that would promote religious freedom and it would prevent anybody who had a certain religious belief from being forced to engage in any kind of activity that, would, that went against their uh, religion or violated religion, like baking a cake for a, for a homosexual marriage. Two homosexuals come in and say, you know what, I want you to bake me a cake. And they say, you know what, we don't, uh, uh, we, we don't want to bake a cake, and therefore, uh, uh, you know, we don't, we don't want to do that for a homosexual. Well, here's what happens usually. Now, this was, this was last year. Uh, bakers who refused to make gay couples' wedding cake shut down their shop following threats and anger. Now, does that sound anything like what we just read? Does that sound like the bully mentality? It does, doesn't it? Sound like the bully mentality. Look at the name calling, Bible thumping B word. And here's a look. All because they didn't want to make a cake. So this law in, in Arizona was basically going to say, look, if a cake maker does not want to make a cake, they don't have to serve that customer. But here's where, here's where our society is. Here's the bully mentality. The NFL, that's the National Football League, was debating whether they should move the Super Bowl from Arizona this next year, this, this coming Super Bowl, because of this so-called anti-gay law, which wasn't anti-gay. It was uh, uh, pro-religious freedom. But they said, you know what, if you sign this bill, we're, we're thinking about just taking the Super Bowl out of Arizona and we'll put it somewhere else. Now, now think about that. Who's being the bully here? Now, the cake makers, the cake makers were bullied into making a cake, or basically they, had, they shut their shop, shop down to keep from doing it. But they were forced to do it. 
threatened if they didn't do it. They're the bad guys because they would not uh, service the homosexual uh, crowd with their, with their, with their uh, product. And now here you, have, here you have the NFL threatening. If you don't promote or if you do something contrary to a particular belief or view, we're going to bully you and say, you know what, we're going to take a very large money-making, income-bringing uh, 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 event we're going to take it out of your state. If you sign this bill, if you do this, this is what we're going to do to you. Isn't that bully mentality? But yet nobody, nobody cries out when the gay bar says, we're not going to serve anybody that's contrary to what we believe. Now, wait a minute. So you, you have, if you don't believe in homosexuality, you still have to bake a cake. But if you don't believe in but if, you, uh, 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 if you're against homosexuality, you can't go into this bar. So we're going to say you, we won't service you because we don't like what you believe, but yet you still have to do something that's against your will. Now I'm saying that's bully mentality. Now, friends, do you really think, do you really think that we are living in a society that the bully tactics, bullying against the truth, is really not going to come to the forefront and soon it's going to be if you say anything against uh, what someone believes that they're going to threaten to hush you to uh, sue you or to do bodily harm to you all of those things have already been said to us that they've already been said to us we've been threatened with lawsuit after lawsuit after lawsuit Really? Seriously? Uh, 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 we're, we're just preaching something that you don't like, so your first reaction is, I'm going to sue you? You don't like the truth, so the first thing you do is you want to bully and intimidate someone to get your way, to get them to hush or shut up or to, to conform to what you believe? Isn't that the bully mentality? Now, someone might be saying, well, James, I, I just don't believe that... Uh, that would happen today. I just don't believe that uh, individuals would uh, would force someone to not preach the truth. Oh, really? The NFL would do it, right? The the homosexual agenda would make cake decorators do it. What about this? Here's a millionaire gay couple that's suing to force the church to perform their wedding. These, 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 two, these two homosexuals basically are saying, they're saying, we've launched a challenge to the government's decision to allow some religious groups to opt out of marrying same-sex couples. This is what uh, uh, Barry Druitt hyphen Barlow says. We're, we're suing so, so that we can have a so-called church wedding. Now, friend, do you see the pattern here? The pattern is if you don't do what I want you to do, we're going to intimidate you, we're going to force you, we're going to threaten you. Now, who, who's going to defend the truth? Who's going to step up and defend the truth? You know why they do this? It's because, friends, it's because they don't really have any way to defend their own position. So it always is the case that those who oppose the truth, who cannot answer the truth, always resort, uh, resort, excuse me, resort to violence, phys uh, you know, physical contact or physical threats in order to get their way. Let's go back, if you would, to Acts, to the book of Acts. In Acts chapter 5 is where we read about them threatening them. They threatened the apostles, then they beat the apostles. They put them in jail. The, they released them, beat them, and then, then let them go. Now, the very next chapter, the very next chapter, you know what you find? 
Look at this. The very next cha chapter, there's some trouble in, 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 in the church there, so they, they selected seven men. They appointed seven men that the apostles put over the administration of the, the widows to take care of the widows. And notice this. And the, verse 7, And the word of the Lord, the word of the Lord increased, and the number of the disciples multiplied in Jerusalem greatly, and a great company of priests also. Now, these they, seven men is whom they selected. All right? Uh, and one of them was Stephen. Stephen. Now, come down and look at verse, let's look at verse 8. And Stephen, full of faith and power, did great wonders and miracles among the people. Verse 9, Then uh, there arose certain of the synagogues, which is called the synagogue of the Libertines, and uh, Cyrenians, and uh, uh, of Alexander, and then of Cilicia, and of Asia. And what were they doing? Disputing with Stephen. They were disputing with Stephen. And notice, and they were not able to resist the wisdom and the spirit by which he spake. They just couldn't answer him. They didn't like what he was saying. They tried to answer him, but they just couldn't do it. Now, what do you think the result's going to be? If you can't answer the truth, then usually what happens is you go bully the truth. You're going, to let, you're going to use the bully pulpit or you're going to use the bully tactics and you're going to you know, be the, the, the schoolyard bully. You're going to bring it to uh, 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 physic, something physical, you might say. But first, what do they do? Verse 11, they suborned men which said, We have heard him speak blasphemous words against Moses and against God. So first they find men that are going to lie about it. They're going to lie about it. Lie on Stephen, and they stirred up the people. Now this is exactly this is exactly what society does today. If someone cries out against homosexuality, if someone cries out against uh, you know immorality, ungodliness, oh you know you just a troublemaker, you just you know you just a judgmental, um, hypocritical, homophobic, you know hate monger. What you are. So they stirred up the people and the elders and the scribes and came upon him and caught him and, notice, and brought him to the council and set up false witnesses which said, This man ceaseth not to speak blasphemous words against this holy place and the law. For we heard him say that this Jesus of Nazareth shall destroy this place and shall change the customs which Moses delivered us. And all that sat in the council, looking steadfastly on him, saw his face as it had been the face of an angel. Now look at verse, uh, or look at the next chapter. Then the high priest said, Are these things so? And he said, Men and brethren. So now he starts giving his defense. He starts giving his defense. And when you get down to chapter, when you get down to chapter Seven and about verse 55, he convicts them of, notice, he convicts them of killing Jesus. Notice this, verse 52, he says, Which of the prophets have not your fathers persecuted, and they have slain them which showed before the coming of the just one, of whom, now watch this, of whom you have now been the betrayers and murderers, Oh, he's telling the truth, and they don't like it. And they heard these things. They were cut to the heart and gnashed on him with their teeth. But he, being full of the Holy Ghost, looked up steadfast into heaven and saw the glory of God and Jesus standing on the right hand. And he said, Behold, I see the heavens open and the Son of Man standing on the right hand of God. And they cried out with a loud voice and stopped their ears and ran upon him with one accord and cast him out of the city and stoned him. And the witnesses laid down their clothes at a young man's feet whose name was Saul and they stoned Stephen calling upon God saying Lord Jesus receive my spirit and he kneeled down and cried with a loud voice Lord lay not their sin to their charge and when they had when he said this he fell asleep they killed him they killed him we don't like what you're saying 
We're going to threaten you. Don't speak. Don't preach it again. We don't like what you say. We'll make somebody lie. We'll make up lies about you. You know, do you know what people say about the Church of Christ? They don't like what we, they don't like the, the truth that's being preached. So you know what they say? They're a cult. You know, they, they make people go crazy. I heard on the uh, headliners, Monday headliners, I just heard it, uh, part of it uh, tonight. You know, yeah, well, yeah, they, people, well, they, they leave there, they become atheists. Oh, really? Is that, is that the best you can do? Someone says, well, you know, people leave over there and they just, you know, they're all messed up in the head. You know, maybe they're messed up in the head before they got with us. And we tried to help them. As a matter of fact, uh, the, the guy that was talking about all that, that we've done for this one man was saying, well, you know, they helped him out. Yeah, we gave him a car. You know, brethren helped him, uh, helped him with his vehicles, his finances, got him straightened out. There's a lot of people that come to our door and we help them out. Now, whether they choose to stay, that's up to them. But typically what happens is when someone hates the message, then they're going to start saying all kinds of things about it. Yeah, you know, you know what goes on up there. And no one ever stops to check out. Is it true? You know, our doors are open. We're on TV how many times a week? Sunday night? Uh, Wednesday night, Thursday night. We have Bible study on Sundays, Tuesdays, Wednesdays, Thursdays. It, it's easier for you to find a night when you cannot talk to someone in the Church of Christ than it is the other way around. I mean, you you cannot find you won't you may not find someone uh, in the Church of Christ that they're having a Bible study on Monday night, or Friday night, or Saturday night. But the rest of the nights, the four night, there's four nights a week when you can talk to someone about the gospel and you find out what the Church of Christ is all about, either in our Bible studies or on TV programs. You think about that. We are open. I mean, we're an open book. Now, why would anybody want to bully the truth? Unless it's because they don't like the truth. Now, here, here's my question to you, friends. You know, we talked about we talked about those school bullies. What kind of person are you when it comes to bullying the truth? You know, in in the cycle of bullying, here's what you have. You have you have the victim. You have the victim. And then A is the bully. A A is the bully who's who's picking on that person or you know, threatening them, maybe beating up on them, punching them, uh, intimidating them in some way or fashion. Then you have, there's a group of people that, that's labeled B. They're the followers. They're kind of with the bullet. They're egging it on. They're the ones that are maybe even participating in it. Uh, then you have the supporter. He takes part in the bullet. Maybe, you know, he's, he may not be actually doing it, but he's the one that's jeering them on, you know. Then you have uh, uh, the passive supporter. Yeah, I'm, I'm not going to say anything about it. I'm not really cheering it on. But I'm, I'm uh, enjoying watching the bullying, you know. I think it's funny. I'm taking pleasure in seeing someone else be mistreated. Then you have the, the disengaged onlooker in verse uh, uh, number E, letter E. The disengaged onlooker. You know, I'm just kind of looking on. I don't really have a, a dog in that fight one way or the other. Then you have the passive defender. Someone who's looking on and says, you know what, that's wrong. Bullying is wrong, but I'm not going to step in. I'm not, going to, I'm not going to get involved. Oh, it's wrong. I hate to see it happen, but I'm not going to get involved. And then you have the defender, the one who actually steps up, tries to stop the bully, and helps the victim. Now, friends, in the scenario that we're painting here, the victim is the truth. And the church of Christ is the defender of the truth. And there's a lot of individuals that I know watch this program, watch our programs, come to our Bible study and so forth, uh, participate in our tent meetings. They're not members of the church, but you know what? I, I say you're down here and you're F. Maybe you, you like to hear the truth preached. You want to see the truth defended. But you're not going to get engaged. You're not going to get involved. 
Because you know what happens. You know what? If you get involved, guess what? You move up to G. And that means you have to have direct contact with A and B. You have to have direct contact with the bullies. And you're just not going to be someone that's going to be the victim here. So you stay over here in your little corner. Now, here's what the world would have us to believe. The world would have us to believe that we need to be, at the very least, we just need to be F. We need to be people that have our own opinions, have our own mindset, have our own thoughts and our beliefs, our own convictions, but we don't dare say it. If it's contrary to what someone else believes or what some small minority thinks, if you say it, you're going to be, you're going to be in the sights. You're going to be on the firing line. You cannot defend the truth without someone putting the bullseye on you putting the crosshair on you. And there's a lot of individuals that just don't want to be in that position. So whether they stay, they stay behind. And that's exactly what the world wants, friends. That's exactly what those who hate the truth would want us to do. They'd want us to sit back and be very passive. They'd want us to sit back and be very uh, uh, docile. You know, just let no, we're calm. You know, I don't dare say anything. That's what they would want. Here's an article that I read today. Uh, it really was very, uh, I mean, there's so much uh, uh, craziness and silliness in it that I, I, I couldn't answer it all. But there was one, there was one, art, one paragraph in here that I, that I wanted to bring to your attention. The article was called Walking the Second Mile. Jesus Discrimination and religious freedom. And the author, the lady who wrote the, who wrote the article, basically she's saying that people with religious, who, who are, are touting religious freedom and religious liberty, really are not being Christians if they oppose things like homosexuality. And that we should go the second mile. In other words, we should be willing to do more for the gay, lesbian, transgendered, whatever society. Well, you know, we, we ought to go the extra mile for that. We ought to serve, be willing to serve them. Oh, th never mind the fact that they wouldn't give you the same courtesy. Never mind the fact that they're the ones who would threaten, who would uh, uh, sue, who would be abusive to you. But see, as a Christian, you have an obligation to turn the other cheek. Now, here's the paragraph that I thought was very interesting. <clears throat> it says, the truth is, evangelical Christians, now she's using that term very broadly, evangelical Christians have already lost the culture wars. She says, it's not because the other side won or because evangelicals have failed to protect our own religious liberties. Evangelicals, now listen, evangelicals lost the cultural wars the moment they committed to fighting them. The moment they decided to stop washing feet and to start waging war. Now you think about that. You know, I read that whole I read that whole article, and it was it's pretty lengthy. But I read that article, and this is the one paragraph that really summed it up. You see, the way that the bully of the truth, the way the bullies of the truth operate is they want to convince you. And they want to convince me that we're not really Christians or we're not behaving as, as the Bible says when we start opposing what they believe. So we lost the culture war when we started fighting the culture war. Well, wait a minute. You mean there's a war going on for our culture that we should not be engaged in? You mean to tell me that there is... There is some immorality, some ungodliness, and some things that are contrary to the, 
the, uh, the Bible are contrary to what we believe, but if we engage in a, in a battle, a war, that now we've lost a war? <clears throat> Basically, friends, what this is saying is the way that evangelical Christians, and I'm using that term very broadly too, but the way that individuals who profess to live by the Bible or believe the Bible, she says the way they lose the war is by stepping up and opposing things. Now, friends, I can only think one thing that that means. That means what they want us to do is they want us to sit down, shut up, not open our mouths, not oppose anything, and let them do their thing, let them do whatever they want to do, and then, oh, we'll be good Christians because we're sitting over here doing nothing. You know what, friends? That's not what the Bible says. That's not what Jesus meant when he said, turn the other cheek. And so help me God, I will not sit back and say nothing about the immorality and let someone threaten me or intimidate me to say, well, you're not a Christian if you act or, or oppose the things that, that the Bible opposes. When someone says, you need to let me do what I want to do, that's the bully mentality. The bully says, you need to leave me alone. You need to get out of my way or I'm going to run over you. I'm going to sue you. I'm going to threaten you with bodily harm. And that's exactly what they do. Now the question is, where are you going to be when it comes to the uh, uh, opposing those who bully the truth. Are you going to be the one that sits over here on the side and not say anything? Or are you going to be someone that steps up and toes the line and says, I'm going to defend the truth? You know, the Bible does not say that we should be passive and sit back and do nothing. And that going the extra mile or turning the other cheek is, is simply turning a blind eye to evil. That's what really they would have us believe, that turning the other cheek is really turning a blind eye. And that's just not the case. You know, we read Acts 4 and Acts 5 where the disciples were threatened and they were beaten. And notice the reaction in both instances. Notice this. In Acts 4, verse 19, all right, let's back up and let's read uh, verse 18 again. They commanded, then they, they called them and commanded them not to speak or teach in the name of Jesus. They threatened them. Don't you do it. Don't you do it. And here's the response. But Peter and John answered and said to them, Whether it be right in the sight of God to hearken unto you more than unto God, judge ye. He said, you just go ahead and you figure it out. If you think it's better for me to listen to you rather than listen to God, then you just decide that. But here's what we decide. We cannot but speak the things which we have seen and heard. I just can't help but say what the gospel uh, is. I just can't help but preach it. That's what Peter's saying. You, you can decide. You decide whether it's right to listen to you more than to listen to God. But we, we already know what we decide. We decide it's better to listen to God than to you. And that's exactly what they said. That's exactly what they said in Acts 5. Acts 5, and we're going to look at verse uh, 29. All right. Then Peter and the other apostles, now notice, let's back up and get the threat here. They commanded him, didn't we command you not to teach in his name and behold you have filled Jerusalem up with your doctrine? Didn't we tell you this? And you, you intend to bring this man's blood upon our head? Didn't we tell you don't do that? And notice the response, verse 29. Then Peter and the other apostles answered and said, we ought to obey God rather than men. Friends, the bully can tell me don't preach against homosexuality. And I know the day's coming. The day's coming when the things I've said tonight are criminal. That's fine. And I expect the day's coming when lawsuits are going to be 
filed and tried to get us off the air. That's, you know, that's fine. I suspect the day's coming when we're going to get more threats and, you know, more intimidation tactics because people don't like the truth and that's to be expected. And as much as within me is, this is going to be my response. I'm going to obey God rather than men. You know, we, we really don't live in a society that has free speech. Not, not truly free speech. Because there's always someone who doesn't like what they hear and they're going to fight against it. But Jude says, be earnestly contending for the faith. Paul said, I'm, <clears throat> I'm set for the defense of the gospel. Philippians 1, 17. Philippians 1, 27, he says, strive for the truth of the gospel. So that's what we're doing. We're going to oppose the bully. The bully of the truth, that's who we're going to oppose. We want you to stand with us. We can help you obey the gospel. You become a member of the Church of Christ, be a, 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 a warrior in the war against wickedness. We want to help you do that. You, you can reach me. Uh, you can reach me tonight uh, on my, my phone number, 276-340-2653. You can reach me at wordfromthelord.gmail.com. We meet at, at 250 the Boulevard, Sundays at 9 a.m., uh, 10 a.m., Thursdays at 7 p.m. Anytime I can help you, we want to do that very thing. Help us fight the war. Stop the bully of the truth. If we can help you anyway, we want to do that very thing. Thanks for watching. Have a good night. Mark Childry coming to you from our studios in beautiful downtown Reedsville, North Carolina. It's Thursday. We have 46 degrees this hour. Matt Smith has a look at the forecast coming up in just a few moments. We are under a fire danger advisory. I'll tell you more about that in just a second. But we just received word from the Rockingham County Clerk of Superior Court. There's been four new filings in local elections. We want to give you these four names and then we will give you the complete list of all of the candidates on our Friday newscast beginning at five o'clock. You'll definitely want to stay tuned for that and it looks like with the, the addition of these four people that things could really get interesting in Rockingham County. The four new filings as of five o'clock today by the Rockingham County Board of Elections in Wentworth. Daniel K. Bailey who is a well-known attorney in Rockingham County, has filed for clerk of superior court, apparently filing as a Republican. So now he will be challenging incumbent Democrat Mark Pigram for clerk of superior court. And again, Daniel K. Bailey, an attorney in Rockingham County, his office located in Wentworth, filed for clerk of superior court. There's also been a filing in the sheriff's race in Rockingham County. A Democrat, John Farrell, uh, has filed against...